Hello, everyone, and welcome hello, back. To, guys. Hello, guys. Welcome back, everyone, and hello to the second day uh, of the Virtual Developers Conference. Um, I'm here today with my co-host Aditya, and uh, it's a pleasure to to be ready and full of energy for uh, lots of interesting sessions. Then let's dig yeah. into our first presentations. Um, we have Sandeep Ramgulam and Kushal Sumari from Team LSL Digital in the line. Um, hi, guys. How are you doing? Hello, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, Sandeep, you are in the pink cloud. What happened? Yeah. So uh, apologies to everyone for my webcam. I had I had uh, an urgent need of a webcam and I just bought the one that was available and it turns out it doesn't it heats a lot and it turns pink. Nothing much I can do about it. <laughs> I need to get a new one. <laughs> okay, I can cool. see from the chat that uh Chitesh is saying life is pink, la vie en rose, so yes, <laughs> keep it keep the mood light. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I did yeah. What, are, what, what is it that we can expect now in the, in the first slot? So this, both of these guys are front-end experts and they're really passionate about Vue. In fact, uh, I think both of them went to the Vue.js conference in Amsterdam. And uh, I think it was the Czech Republic the first time for Sandeep. And they have really <coughs> good experience of how Vue.js works and Right now, there's uh, the next big release of Vue, Vue 3, and they are going to talk mm -hmm. about uh, what uh, Vue 3 brings, what new things it brings, and the new GUIs that they are, and things like that. So All I right. think we'll leave the floor to them to elaborate more. Exactly, exactly. That sounds great. So please, the audience, place your questions in the live chat. We're going to pick them up, we monitor them, and we're going to uh, have then a Q&A session at the end of the presentation uh, with more details about what just happened. And with that, I'll leave it to the presentation. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Developers Conference 2020. Um, this is a presentation by Kushal and myself. Um, we will be talking a bit about web accessibility, front-end ecosystem, and at the end I will give you a glimpse of the new and upcoming Vue 3.0. So here's an overview of the of this session. So Kushal will start with accessibility. He will go through he will go through the Vue 2.0 uh, new stuff. Um, you will discover GYGS. Um, he will speak a bit about uh, websites being carbon neutral and how it affects how it affects climate change. And at the end, I will talk about Vue 3.0. So to get started, um, I will throw this over to Kushal. Kushal, over to you. So hello guys, my name is Kushal. I'm a software engineer at LSL Digital. So I will talk mainly about my experience from UGS Amsterdam 2020 that just happened uh, in February, just before the lockdown. Um, my main talk will, will be based on uh, accessibility and a bit on uh, Vuetify, the upgrades, and uh, the most important is the uh, front-end ecosystem. And Sandeep uh, will continue with uh, Vuetify 3.0. So we'll start, what is accessibility? So for people who don't know exactly about accessibility in a front-end, it is, uh, so when website, application and technologies or tools are badly designed, they can create barriers that exclude people from using the web. So we should ensure that there is no barriers that prevent the interaction with or access to so it includes people with physical disabilities, situational disabilities, and also socioeconomic restriction. So if you see this image, we have like for people who can't see properly, we have a, pro a hearing problem, learning disability. All these include uh, in, the pro in, in the accessibility. 
Okay, so accessibility is essential for developers and organizations that want to create high quality websites and web tools and mainly not to exclude the people from using the web. So after some research, we can, this has been broken down into four major aspects. That is first, perceivable. You can see here that is a, something about the content, so we, it should, we should uh, see stuff. And we have here operable, we can see a keyboard, like we should uh, be able to navigate over the website easily. We have understandable, how to understand the website, and we have also robust, how things should be done. Okay, so we will proceed with the perceivable first. So what perceivable means, it is information and user interface components must be presentable to users in a way they can perceive, okay? For example, we have meaningful content of a uh, meaningful order of content. So like, uh, you know, headings, lists, the tables, and input fields or markup properly. We should have an order in our web page. So we have also don't use only color to convey information. So we have uh, maybe somewhere a brief de description of the non-text content. We have, uh, for example, audio descriptions and caption for for audio, and some uh, video we have. We should have sign language and interpre interpretation. Sorry, and uh, most important for contrast, we should have sufficient contrast. For example. We should be able to differentiate between background and the text. So, for example, if you are using a light background, the text should be dark to differ differentiate between the background and the text code. So, this is all for perceivable. We will move to operable. Operable me means use the user interface components and the navigation must be operable. Okay. Here we can talk about keyboard focus, web browsers, and labels. So many people does not use mouse and rely on keyboard to interact with the web. This uh, requires uh, keyboard access to all functionalities, including form controls, input, and user other user component. So if you if if you are talking about web browsers, you should provide the keyboard support. And label for user elements, for example, the form. We should have a label to to know which field to input. So this is all for operable. Thirdly, we have understandable. This states that content and the operation of the user must be understandable. So such content includes uh, identifying the primary language of a web page, for example. So providing definition of any unusual words or sentence. So for example, we have here data is checked for errors or the navigation menu style and positioning should be consistent. Like for example, if we are moving from uh, the home page to the about page, the navigation style should not change or people will tend to lose in the web page. So data is checked for errors and the user is given an opportunity to correct them. For example, if you are if you are using a form or something like that, there there should be errors for validation and allow people to correct them and some colors to differentiate differentiate between the 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 place where it has errors and stuff. And lastly, we have robust robust refers specifically to web content that is compatible with a variety of user agents. What user agent means? We have browsers, assistive technologies, and other means of web content. So, for example, we should ensure that uh, some of the validation, sh validation uh, tools is properly interpreted. We have also for WAI to provide, uh, for example, 
name, role, and value for non-standard user components. And we have also navigation, banner, or search. This is uh, one of the most important part of accessibility because it does not only include uh, disabled people, but mostly main uh, normal people using the web. So I think that it's for web accessibility. We will move uh, on Beautify 2 and upgrade. So for people who don't know what Beautify is or has never used it, it is a UI library built with view and as a guide of Google material specification. So the goal is to provide the user with everything that is needed to build a rich and engaging web application using the material design specification. So in terms of uh, browsers, it supports Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari 10 plus. So I think also Internet Explorer 11 and Safari 9 with Polyfill, but does it support uh, Internet Explorer 9 or 10, I think. So like we said, the um, goal is to simplify your development process. That is, uh, Vitify has been built with Vue, and also it enables users to build feature-rich web application. So we will proceed to some update and changes on uh, Beautify. Let's go to the website and take a look about the updates. So if you have never used Beautify, you can say get started. And here we will see some pre-made layout how do they build for you? You can easily start to build something. So we have some browser support here. We have the customization. You see here it's accessibility. It's one of the key aspects here. So here we have some variables and the most important is the UI components. You have alerts, application. You see here it's new. This has been uh, made with a new upgrades that is to buy uh, Vitify 2 plus. We have the props, slots, events, how to use uh, components easily. And here we have all the update. You can see here, very easy to use. So if you have never tried, guys, give it a try and you give me feedback. So I won't spend too much time on this. I'll let you on your own to investigate. Okay, let's proceed to graphical user interface for JavaScript. So this, I have learned this from Guillaume at uh, Vue.js Amsterdam. I haven't fully tested this uh, so long, but I will elaborate a bit on this. So what is exactly uh, GUIDS? It is for project manager packages and uh, plugins to manage your, your project easily. So here you can see how the UI look like. You have here the packages. You, have, you can install the package here. You get everything in the view CLI. So Everything is global. Integrate your favorite tools. Here is all the features we have. GIGS integrates with an expanding user tools. We have we can manage scripts. We can uh, extend our GUI with plugins, keyboard. So we have the the uh, link to download the GUIGS. So I will let you to, I won't have enough time to investigate more on this. So you have the link here. Yeah, you can take a look when you have time. That is GUIGS.dev. If you have any problem or any more question, you can, you can ask me on Twitter. So let's move to climate change. So about climate change, it is, made, it is one of the most important things for front-end ecosystem nowadays. So let's start by saying how dirty is your website? 
So I, I will give you a link to test your website. Some people doesn't know what is font and equity system exactly means. So how this will work from data and so let's start like uh, from data entries to transmission networks and devices. We hold in our hand. Yes, we hold in our hands everything along the digital chain consume energy. So if we are talking about finding a solution about the transmission networks and device, so we should know what exactly what it, what it is is using all that energy. So we have a website to test how your website imp impacting the planet, estimating your web page. This is to es estimate your web page carbon footprint. So the internet consume a lot of electricity. That is exact to be precise here. So let's give uh, the, let's say the, the DevCon website a try. This is a link. That is MSCC conference by So, so let's take this. Put in the web URL to calculate. So this, how this carbon uh, calculator works. First, you enter the URL and it will calculate the estimate of CO2 emissions and also give tips on how it could be reduced. So here we got the carbon result for conference by MSCC.mu. So this website is dirtier than 86% of a web page tested. So we got the how this works. Firstly, it take uh, five key pieces of data into account when calculating a website CO2 emissions. So firstly, the data transferred over the wire when a web page is loaded. This is the first step uh, this website will do. So secondly, energy intensity of, of web data. Thirdly, the energy source used by the data center. For the carbon intensity of electricity and five the website traffic. So it will group the five key pieces of data when calculating a website CO2 emission. So here we have calculated the CO2 emission for conference.mhcc.mu. So here we see how dirty is the website. So here we can see 2.98 gram of CO2 is produced every day when someone visits the website. This website appeared to be running on a stable energy. So here we got everything that could be improved for this website to be eco-friendly. The same weight has 2.3 nights summer weather as much as CO2 as boiling water. So seven trees, 17 trees, this webpage emits the amount of carbon that 17 trees absorb in a year. We can get so I recommend you guys give your website a try on this link. You will get everything to improve your website. So let's continue. So about climate change, we just say some key aspects. If you test your website on this link given previously, you can see how dirty is your website. So you should make your website more green, make page smaller and uh, mostly make your code more efficient, especially if you're backend, make the code enough uh, clear to read to understand. So to conclude, I will say greener website is going to foster website. So that's all for me, guys. And now Sandeep will proceed with view 3.0. Thanks, Kushal. Um, I really like the part about websites being carbon neutral. I think I should check my own website to see what impact on the environment it has. Um, so up next, I'm going to talk about Vue 3.0, um, the new and 
upcoming version of Vue. Um, right now it's in beta version and it's uh, going to be released uh, soon. I guess we don't have a release date yet. Um, so a bit about myself, I'm Sandeep and I work at Ringe, uh, South Africa. Um, I've been using Vue since three or four years. Um, I also organize and run the front-end coders meetup along with Cedric and uh, we have uh, we try to have meetups uh, every month uh, we've had two uh, i think three online meetups so far since the pandemic hit so um, probably the next one is going to be um, an in-person meetup so look out for that so let's jump uh, into the talk so today um, i'm just going to give an overview of the really cool features that Vue 3.0 brings. And the most obvious one is the Composition API. Um, but obviously, uh, we, just don't, we don't just want to use a feature because it exists. We want to know what issues it can help with and what things that were previously done and can now be done better with the Composition API. And uh, so let's move on to that. So uh, the Composition API um, is uh, a new optional API, so you don't have to use it. You can still use Vue free without knowing the Composition API. And uh, but there are some use cases, as you will see, that can really help you uh, and then help make your code base more maintainable and more um, like enjoyable to work with. So um, let's take a look at a traditional view to component. Uh, let me get my pointer. Yeah. So this would be your usual color picker component. So assume that this is a single file component. And when ren it renders, you have this uh, nice color picker where you can click to copy you can have a visual of the hex code and you can have a preview of the color so the idea is that if you would click on that you would be able to pick your color so um usually for this kind of component or any kind of component really um the code would start by looking looking like this so you would have a data section and a method section so here you would hold your values and here you would hold your functions basically that's how basically every every view single file component works so you're already familiar with that so um so this is not yet the composition api we are still um at the view two level so now say you want to add some more functionality to this color picker like the clipboard that we discussed so now um, we will add some data values here to hold what's being copied and we will hold the functions to for the um, for copying to the clipboard here in the methods so um, so you can already see that we have a feature with displaying colors which is which exists in two places here and here and we have the clipboard features which exist here and here so we have an issue that we generally ignore in view 2 which is that we have our features split across the file so um let's go to the next one so if we would have more features to be added like a converter to hsl or to rgba uh, we would introduce even more um, like more features but split across the same file so what happens is that this can get messy quite quickly and very quickly we will have very very long files and it's hard to follow in for example i'm sure you've met a data object like this and there's so many things in there and you don't know what thing is used for what and only the one who wrote the component 
would me would me be able to figure it out but it's not obvious so it's it makes code bases less maintainable to split features like that so this was an issue identified by the view core team and the composition api is an attempt to fix that so um here's a very simple overview of what we want to achieve so this uh, if you look at the colored bars um so the green one would be the all everything related to color picker values the blue one everything related to clipboard values and so on you get the idea so what if we could do um something like this so what if we could group everything that's related to the color picker values in one place and so on so that when you look at a piece of code um you're looking at one feature and you're looking at at the entire implementation of that one feature so all of its data attributes all of its methods all of its lifecycle hooks they are all in one place so that's the idea of the composition api and what it looks like in terms of code is a bit like this so it is enabled by the setup function so the setup function like uh, illustrated here um, here is is very simple so is this is a new uh, function that will live in the view single file component and here you can as you can see you can split your feature in different functions and then you can just compose the component by feature so for example this use speaker will have its own lifecycle methods and will will have its own data attributes and its all methods and you can imagine that this could live in a separate file and this could live in a separate file you import it and you just use it in the component so you get the idea of how this is become, becoming actually composable hence the name composition api so um i can see a lot of use for this and i hope that uh, i can migrate some of my projects to view free very soon so that I can enjoy using this very cool new uh, developer experience. So um, that was a bit about Composition API. Um, so the next uh, thing that I'm going to talk about um, is very briefly is reactivity without caveats. So I'm sure that you've used the view and sometimes um, with UX, and then you have to set the values for in the store somewhere. And because the values are deeply nested, you have to use view.set um, because when you mutate an array or an, or an object sometimes uh, the reactivity doesn't work because the changes are not translated back to the reactive engine let's say so you are forced to use view.set to resolve this issue um, in view.3 um, the whole the way the whole reactivity thing works has been changed to the, from the ground up so now uh, you don't need to use view that set you can just set the value uh, directly even if it's in a deep state uh, it would just change and it will still be reactive that was one of the main uh, features in svelte that was very attractive and we can now have this in view uh, so that's a very big thing that you don't have to worry about anymore and it's just really nice as a developer to not having to think about these things and have it just work um so that was about it for the view free uh nice um upcoming features so there are more features that i would encourage you to read about and these would be um listed right here so uh there's vit um i've made a presentation previously um so i made a presentation previously about vit and uh, in the front end coders meetup and i've been using it myself uh in development not, not in any production website yet um so what it is is it's uh it's a way to run your front end projects uh, not necessarily only view uh, there have been experiments where uh, you can run react with it um, so it gets rid of webpack and it's really 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 fast 
because there's no bundling process involved it uses a native ESM loader that is available in browsers now so your browser loads the files it's, it needs when it needs them so for example if you have very big view projects you might you might remember that when you start them there's a long progress bar that goes on it's trying to go through a bunch of files compile them and after 30 seconds or so you get uh, to your local host 8080 where you can view your project with it there's none of that you just start it and it's running instantly and as and when um, you are interacting with the application in the browser this is when it loads the files that it needs so it's really fast and if you have projects like with thousands of components this is very a very dramatic change because if your project would take a minute to start it now takes um, it, it starts instantly regardless of the number of components that it has so this is very it's a big advantage if you have a less powerful machine uh, which would increase exponentially the amount of time it needs to boot your project so with it it, it, would, it would just boot instantly so um, the next uh, one is teleport um, teleport is a very nice feature that exists already in other frameworks um, and we do have a plugin called view portals that does the same thing but view free is bringing it uh, into the framework itself so without any other plugins and what it does is it it allows you to um, basically render markup somewhere else in the application so you can think of a Moodle or a notification pop-up where all of the logic could be in one place and you can render um, the view the model itself in another location so you would have a target and you could render it there um, we can already do this with uh, like event listeners and Vuex stores that uh, listen to global events but teleport is a much nicer way and all of your logic and your features basically stay in one place which is very nice um, suspense is another one of those features that is that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's basically a loading state for a component that has an async uh, method. So if your component is loading something, you usually have to implement your own loader and then your own error handling and then you have to show a little loader and then after that uh, you would uh, display your component when the data is ready. So you can just wrap these async components in a suspense template and just like that you get a free loader and you can basically wait for nested async components which is very very nice um, so i would encourage you to read on this and please contact me uh, on twitter or give a shout out to kushal uh, and we will happily um, respond to your uh, queries yeah uh, thank you for watching um please don't forget to uh, give your feedback let me hide my camera yeah please don't listen uh, please don't forget to uh, give your feedback uh, these are our twitter handles uh, and thanks to kushal uh, for doing this uh, talk with me and i hope you learned something new uh, back to the conference enjoy all right, all right. That was a very impressive demonstration about Vue.js. And I've seen there had been quite a number of questions and interests in the live chat. Aditya, what do you have for us? So let me show you the first questions. And this one is for both of you guys from one of my friends, Javin, aka WebSlinger. So he wants to learn about various JavaScript frameworks. But according to you guys, what would you say uh, was your biggest influence for using Vue.js? And what, why would you recommend it uh, over other JavaScript frameworks? Uh, we get this question a lot. So it's it, we even call it the, the framework battle. So I usually have uh, two arguments for Vue. 
Uh, one is that it's it's uh, backed by a community, not by a big corporation, so not Facebook or Google. It's actually a, a, an independent community. So that's one of the reasons. And the other one is that uh, I think Vue has the best developer experience. Since you are a developer and you will be working with this tool for quite some time uh, since you chose it, uh, you you want to pick the one that offers you, the developer, the best experience. On the user side, uh, I think they are all really good and they, they do the best they can. Um, but if you are a developer and you want to pick a tool, you want to pick the one that's that makes your life easier. So that's why we choose Vue. Uh, as for you, Kushal, what would you say is your uh, you had to You went for Vue.js instead of other frameworks. Uh, I have started with Vue.js. Normally, I have a try Angular and uh, other like React. Okay. Okay. To do all my job, all my application. Uh, it's fun. Like for three years, I'm using my using Vue. Uh, for me, it's like a, it's quite easy to use. It's a learning curve is uh, very quick. Like you can learn you in two weeks or three weeks, and I see one question: How is the best uh, tool to learn uh, Vue.js? I think Vue School, because uh, I have learned uh, Vue from a uh, Vue School. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Adicha, one nice thing about Vue School is that since we are from Mauritius, and it, it takes into account our location, it, and it offers a PPP pricing for Mauritius. So every motion gets 62% discount on your school. So that's quite nice. And yeah, for I think January and February, we have one month free. We, we need to check. Sometimes we get one month free to learn from your school. That sounds cool. Cool. So the next question is for is from Percy, and it's for you, Sandeep. So, how, how does the composition API of Vue Free works with map state, map actions, and map getters of UX? Um, so, does it work seamlessly? The answer is yes and no. Um, so, UX has a new version, UX four, which works seamlessly with Vue Free. Uh, but the old UX uh, obviously won't work because it, it's not made for that. Uh, uh, so yes, it, it does work seamlessly. You just import your actions as you would, and you can just start using it. it it's very, it's a very nice experience. Okay, thank you. And the next question is still from Percy. Uh, do we still have? Do, does, does it still have computed methods, data, and so on in the composition API? Yes, so um, methods and computed uh, and data, they all exist. They, they have a slightly different syntax, uh, a simpler syntax, I would say. They almost resemble like simple JavaScript when you look at them. So that's quite nice, actually. So it's less, it resembles less view, but more JavaScript like native JavaScript, but it all it has all the reactivity features that you would expect from Vue. So it's best of both worlds. That sounds pretty good. Thank you for answering those questions. And let me give the floor to you, Jeffy, to close. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty impressed with Vue.js as well. Um, the current conference website, the previous conference website, uh, the next conference website for 21, they are based on uh, Sandeep's work and the team. Um, they are, it's all based on Vue.js. So if you are interested, um, you can have a look on the GitHub repository of um, the MSCC. And um, yeah, check it out what, what these wizards have put together. And you see the results itself. I mean, it's pretty impressive and also for me that is not really um, on a daily basis into front end it's actually pretty easy to get into Vue.js and and you know make a few changes make a few adaptations so it's pretty easy to to learn actually and yeah even in the past um 
based on the pandemic, I, I saw that actually also um, View Mastery um, had a few promotions so that you get um, super easy and, and free of charge access to excellent learning material. Guys, would you like to add anything on your side? Uh, go for it, Michelle. I would say if you have any more questions, you can follow us on Twitter or we have our personal website. You can get it on the conference uh, website. We have our links there. All right. Thank you so much for the presentation on Vue.js accessibility. And um, enjoy the rest of the day and the other sessions. And I'll see you soon during one of the community meetings. Thanks, guys. See Take you, care. guys. Good luck on the day. Bye. Bye. Ciao. All right. Adija, what was the takeaway for you from this session? Well, the takeaway was view just makes front end life easy. At least for me, I've used it a bit. Uh, I've used it a bit for making my charts and all in data science projects. And okay. Always view free. Uh, things are a lot a lot more easier instead of using pl plugins. Uh, it's just baked inside the framework itself. Awesome! Awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy. Well, as I mentioned, I mean, uh, it's, it's really interesting to see about how you get, um, you know, a complete website uh, also in regards to um, uh, area standards, in you know, accessibility. So there are lots of features that um, make it pretty simple in, in, in Vue.js to, to get this kind of um, you know, richness into your web applications. And uh, I have to say, yeah, I mean, I like it. I really love it. And yeah, I'm happy with what I've seen. I can work with it easily. So it's not a, such a steep entry like like you would say with uh, compared to Angular. Because with Angular, it's really like, OK, you need to get uh, the hang on, the general understanding. And um, so therefore, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. All right, all right. Um, the audience, we are at the uh, end of the first session. Uh, enjoy the show.